الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رأيت من اتهذا إلهه هوا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected brothers, elders and sisters <coughs> Our stay in this dunya is for a very temporary period of time The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said The average age span of this ummah it is about 65 years But this, these 65 years which we are in this dunya they have a great impact in the life to come, in the hereafter. And if you want to see a person, a successful person, you should look at him at the time of death. Whatever a person utters at the time of death, or whatever words he administrates, or whatever feelings and thoughts he has, that is a summary of his whole life. If he's a worldly person, he will be scared, he will be having anxiety attacks, that what will happen? Where am I going? What will my abode be? How will Allah Rabbul Izzah judge me? What is waiting for me? What are the provisions of the hereafter? Hazrat Abu Hurair radiallahu an, the greatest muhaddith of this ummah, 5,373 ahadiths are reported from him. Nearly more than half of the ahadiths, the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu are reported from Sayyidina Abu Hurair. 5,000 737 5,373 It is reported when Sayyidina Abu Huraira was passing away he started to cry This is a person who remained and lived with the Prophet Sallallahu his whole life. There was not a second where this person separated himself from the Prophet Sallallahu or there was no other way of him memorizing so many ahadith. The only reason why he memorized so many ahadith, it was because he was close to the Prophet Sallallahu Regardless of the Prophet being in a journey or not, he was always present with the Prophet of Allah. If he was residing in Medina, Abu Huraira was his shadow. And if he was traveling, Sayyidina Abu Huraira was his shadow. It is said at the time of death, he started to cry. So it's a natural reaction. The people sitting around him, they thought that maybe he's dying because he's departing from the dunya. So they asked Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira, why are you crying? This is our natural understanding that a person, if he's crying at the time of death, maybe it's because of the pangs of death, it is of the hardship of death, or a person doesn't know what's going to happen to him. Abu Hurair radiallahu ta'ala, he replied, I am not crying because I am going to separate from your dunya, I am going to depart from your dunya. I am crying because there is a long journey ahead, a long journey. Today, if we were to travel overseas, what is the preparations we make? So many preparations. If we are traveling in within Australia, you don't need a ticket, an air ticket. But if you are flying overseas, you will need an air ticket. You have to purchase the air ticket. Then you take leave off from work. Then you collect all your necessary, all the necessary items and goods which you will take with you preparation is required 
You don't just book a ticket and sit on the plane. When you book a ticket or you intend to travel anyway, you make some preparations, there's a plan. Allah Rabbul has placed us in this dunya and the ticket has been given to us. The ticket is the time of death. That is our ticket. It has already been given to Malakul Maut, the angel of death, our ticket of death. When the appointed time will come, he will come and take us. Now are we ready? What provisions have we collected? Abu Harayr ta'ala he said, there is a long journey. And my provisions are minimum. Allah Akbar. This is Sayyidina Abu Harayr said, I've got no provisions for this journey. I haven't collected sufficient provisions for this journey. If this is the state of Abu Huraira, where do we stand? What is our condition? And this is that person who has been given the glad tidings of paradise. In general, all the Sahaba were given the glad tidings. Ya ayyul ladina amalu radiyallahu an. In general, all the Sahaba were given the glad tidings of Jannah. He's a dweller of Jannah. Jannah is guaranteed for him. And he's scared, he's crying that I haven't collected enough provisions for this journey. What, have our, what are our provisions? The month of Ramadan? A little zikr here and there. This is Abu Huraira, 5,373 ahadiths were reported from him. Half of deen was reported from him. Half of deen. You take Abu Huraira out of the picture, you are left with half the ahadith, half of the ahadith. There are only 15,000 contextual ahadith, 15,000, only. And the majority of them have been reported by three sahaba, majority. And nearly half have been reported by Abu Huraira. And at the time of death, he's even scared. Even though he sacrificed everything, done, man and done. His life, his soul, his wealth, whatever he had for the cause of deen. We're not even ashar e ashir. We haven't even made the 10% of the 10% effort Sayyidina Abu Huraira made. Not even the 10% of the 10%. And then he said, I am at this stage where my soul is coming out now. I'm at this stage where my soul is coming out. And I don't know what is waiting for me. Is it Jannat or is it Jahannam? Is what is I don't know what is waiting. Will Allah send me to Jahannam or will Allah send me to Jannat? I have no idea. And then he said, when you take me towards my grave, the Qabristan, the cemetery, don't erect a canopy up there and don't take a fire as well. And don't make noise, don't cry over me, don't wail. And haste towards my grave. If I am good, why are you separating me? Why are you delaying me from me? Why are you delaying me from meeting my Rabb? Hurry up. And if I'm an evil soul, if I'm a wretched soul, you should still hurry up. You know why? You should take this burden off your shoulders. Take the purse, take the burden of this wretched soul of your shoulders and bury him, hurry up. This is Abu Hurair radiallahu an. That's why he said at the time of death, the Prophet said, a person at the time of death makes a sound. Every makhluk of Allah Rabbul is it all the living creations can hear this sound except human beings. Because if human beings heard this sound, the Prophet ﷺ said, they would fall unconscious. And then when he's been taken towards the cemetery to the graveyard, if he is a pious and righteous soul, he says, hurry up. Why are you stopping me from, why are you stopping me from meeting my Lord? Hurry up. And if he's a wretched soul, he says, why are you so haste? Why are you hurrying towards the cemetery, to the, towards my grave? If you know what was waiting for me there, the evil that was waiting for me there, you would not be haste. 
and then two angels descend extremely dark with blue eyes and they attack a person from its head, from the person's head they come from the head from the direction of the head they want to attack him now these two angels and then what intervenes is a person's quran if he read the quran if he learned the quran studied the quran implemented the quran the quran will intervene the quran will not let this angel come close to this person and it will say if this person studied read and practiced me it was for this day that i can protect him how much of us read the quran in the month of ramadan how many qurans did we complete in fatawa alamgiri one of the most comprehensive books of fiqh which 500 ulama of the time compiled in hindustan under the supervision of aurangzeb alamgir rahimahullah there is a fatwa there is a masla a person does not read the quran the whole year once he does not pick up the quran and read it even once the whole year he is on the he is on the doors of kufr it is close that he becomes a kafir Forget about reading, we should have completed Qur'ans in the month of Ramadan. 10, 15 Qur'ans. Shaykh al-Adisa Mulana Zakaria Rahimahumullah, the, the person who wrote Fazayla Amal, the ladies of his house, they used to read 15, 16 Jews every day. These are the ladies of the house. They used to spare so much time that they could read 15, 16 Jews. Shaykh al used to read one Qur'an every day. How many Qur'ans have we read? But that's not the topic today. Ramzan is gone now. Who knows Allah will prune our life for next year. We are very vulnerable. Last week, one of our relatives, Thursday, young boy, 28 years old, went to hospital. Yesterday we got a call, he's passed away. Six days finished. And the boy was absolutely healthy. No sickness before this. Nothing. No sickness at all. Thursday we got the call, he's in hospital. And last night we got the call, he's passed away in England. 28 years old. No prior sickness, disease or anything. Now the thing is, when these two angels come, that are extremely dark with blue eyes have we read enough quran sufficient quran for that quran to protect us it's not a joke it's if we don't believe in the life if we don't believe in any life of the qabr if we don't believe that allah will resurrect us then there's no problem but if we believe there's a life in the grave there's a life in, there's a life of the hereafter then it's a very serious matter my parents cannot help me there my wealth cannot help me there. My status cannot help me there. My neighbors cannot help me there. My wife, my children cannot help me there. I will be alone. And these two angels, who can compete? As far as physical strength is concerned, no one can compete with the angels. Nobody. The only thing that we're able to compete with them is our A'mal. If we have done some A'mal, this A'mal will push them back. So they will come from the head. The Quran will intervene and the Quran will say if he read, if he studied, if he practiced me, it was for this day. And then these angels will come from his legs, from the direction of his feet. They will come from the direction of his feet. And then Birne Walidain will come. If a person was good to his parents, if he was compassionate towards his parents, if he was nice and kind towards his parents, then this Amal will come and intervene between him and the angels. And this Amal will say if we were kind, this Amal will say if this person was kind to his parents, it was for this day. And then these angels will come from the right, from the, from the right direction. From the right side they will come. And then Sadaqah will intervene. Sadaqah, charity which you give in the path of Allah Rabbul Izzat. Charity will come. And you'll say, if this person spent in the path of Allah, it was for this day. 
And then these angels will come from the left side and then your fast will come. But who knows if our fast are accepted? Who knows if our sadaqah is accepted or not? Which purpose, with which intention do we give sadaqah? With which purpose and intention do we fast? Fast is not only refraining from food and liquid. It is much more than that. Ramzan is a crash course for us to change our lives, to connect ourselves with Allah. If we are not changed after Ramzan, it is not accepted. Ramzan, fast, is not accepted. If we are not changed after Hajj, it is a sign our Hajj is not accepted. If we do not change after Allah gives us health, if we experience sickness, it is a sign that these were not, this sickness was not atonement for my sins. And then what will happen is, two angels will wake this person up. This person will wake up and then they will ask a question. They will say, what do you say about that person's teachings who you practiced all your life? Now the question is, are we practicing or not? This dead person, he was practicing, that's why he's been asked. They will ask the angels, what do you say about the teachings of that person whose teachings you practiced all your life? He will say, what person? <coughs> They will say Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He will say, "I bear witness that he is the messenger of Allah Rabbul Izzat." Then the angels, they will affirm and they will say that you lived a life of iman and you died in the state of iman. You can only say this if you prepared for this. And then Allah Rabbul Izzat will broaden his grave, and then Allah Rabbul Izzat will shower his bounties upon him. One Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu was passing a town. As he was passing a town, he saw a mountain. And from that mountain, he could hear some voices. He heard some sounds. He heard some sounds of screaming and wailing. So he asked the people of the town, what is this sound I am hearing from this mountain? They said, the days... Since we have been in this basti, in this town, we have been hearing this sound from this mountain. We have been hearing this. So Isra said, he was very perplexed. So he raised his hand and he made a dua to Allah. He said, Allah give me the strength to talk to the mountain and the mountain to reply. <coughs> so he asks the mountain, why are you screaming and wait? So Allah Rabbul Izzat gives the mountain, the strength to talk, the mountain says, Oh Isa, what do you want to ask me? Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam says, What is the reason of your crying and wailing? What is the reason? I hear a strange sound from you. He says, I am such a mountain that people carve idols from me and then worship them. And since I've heard this verse, I cannot stop crying. This is a mountain, very strong. Fire cannot melt a mountain. The winds cannot move a mountain. Extreme cold weather has no effect on mountains. But the mountain is saying, since I've heard this verse, I cannot stop crying. What is the verse? What the kunnar aladi wakudu hunnas wal hijara? That on the day of judgment, what will be the fuel of Jahannam? It will be people and it will be mountains, rocks. I am scared Allah will cast me in Jahannam. I am scared Allah will cast me. This is a mountain and fire has no effect on rocks. That's why I mentioned that a rock. Which in our matters of deen, we should be like a mountain, like a rock. A rock has four qualities. I will not mention. I mentioned them on my Eid message. Four qualities of a rock. The mountain says, since I've heard this verse, since I've heard this statement, I cannot stop crying. I don't know my abode. I don't know what will happen to me. Allah Rabbul Izzat inspired Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam and said to Isa, tell the mountain, to be at peace, I will not cast him in Jahannam. Tell the mad man to be at peace, I will not cast him. Where do we stand compared to a mountain? That's my dear respected brothers. It's not that the month of Ramadan has passed. 
and we give up our deen. Deen is a long a mission for life till our last breath and we will see the results at the time of death. We will see the results of our Iman at the time of death. I'll finish off on one note, Sayyidina Bilal Habshi, when he was passing away, his wife said, Wa'akhaznahu, how sad. He said, Wa'atarab, wa'atarab, wa'atarabahu, nulqi ghadan muhammadan wa ashabihi. He goes, oh my wife, there's nothing to cry about. Today Bilal will meet his beloved Muhammad and his companions. This was the Iman they had. That I'm not, if I'm departing from this dunya, I'm going to a better place. Tomorrow I will meet my beloved Muhammad and his companions. Allah Rabbul Izzat give us the tawfiq to implement and practice. Wa akhirul da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.